Praise the Lord, glory to God. Kathy back here, and we are with Allison. Allison on our team has an awesome presentation she's going to give you. I told you guys like a month ago we were going to do this, and we now are ready and led to put this all together for you. So Allison is amazing, anointed in this, and I am just going to give her the floor, and she's just going to share what the Lord's been showing her. So you go for it, sister. Thank you, Kathy, so much. And thank you all um, of those who are joining us and those who are listening after the recording. Um, I just want to come before the Father and say a prayer. Father, we just give you all the praise, all the glory and honor for this time to share. I just pray, Father God, that you quicken my spirit. I want to speak all of your truth and nothing of my flesh. And if any words... Um, aren't of you i just pray that they fall to the ground and those that are help them to remember them oh lord and and um resonate within their spirit and i just give you all the praise and glory and honor for what you've shown me and it's exciting and we're just so excited to see you we know it won't be long and we just again give you all the praise and glory and honor in jesus mighty name amen Amen and amen. And real quick, sister, um, I am, or I just wanted to say a quick um, announcement to everybody watching. We are letting, because it's easier for her to present it on her computer screen, we're going to let her share her screen um, because then she can just point to everything. I'm hoping it's going to be clear enough for you guys. It should be. It's really, you don't need to see all the details as much because we're going to send you the links for it anyway. Um, just to just kind of listen, she's going to explain it to each of the pictures as it is, um, each of the pictures anyway. So even if you can't see them, she's going to explain why she's got the picture up. So it should be fine. Okay. So go for it, sister. Oh, okay. Thank you, Kathy. No problem. Okay. So, um, just a little bit of background in case you didn't already know, um, a few months ago, Kathy and I did some live streams of numbers, um, that the Lord had given me. And, you know, we put presentations together on those. And so these are things that have kind of happened since that time frame. And just more revelation into what some of those numbers and things were. You know, possible revelations. Um, again, um, these are just things that point to certain time frames. This is not a thus saith the Lord spoke to me, you know, verbally or anything like that. Um, it's just us um, being led by the Holy Spirit, the way, you know, we are led to put puzzle pieces together. So um, understand, too, that there's always layers of understanding to things that, you know, we're all given, just like there's layers of understanding in Scripture. So just keep those things in mind. And um, I'll just kind of start um, from where we left off a little bit um, with a with what I got previously. So um, May the 5th, um, I was given a dream um, about the menorah. And a lot of it was personal, but um, I believe it comes into understanding with some things from watching other videos um, from other brothers and sisters on YouTube. So the menorah dream was um, on, again, May the 5th. And I know we're relating a lot of things to this time frame of July 17th, 18th, um, really clear up until August uh, 24th, 25th of things that um, have been heard through other brothers and sisters. So just keep that in mind. This is like a time frame, but um, right now the focus is going to be within this next week. So, um, so that's where we're going. So with that, that menorah dream is 73 days to July the 17th. And that kind of spoke to me a little bit because this is Israel's 73rd year um, since they came back into the land in uh, May 14, 1948, okay? So there's prophecy um, about their 70 years, you know, and you think, well, three years have gone past that. Well, in Leviticus 19, I believe, um, they first had to let the land rest for three years before they could take any fruit thereof off of it. 
So there's this additional three years that um, we have in scripture. So we are at this time frame because in Zechariah it talks about how they won't celebrate the fast um, of the ninth of Av, which is you know 717, 718. Um, some calendars have it going out to 720. So um, I just thought that was an interesting connection. Um, and I'll come back to a little bit about that menorah uh, later on as I go through the, the dates. See, I'm trying to kind of keep it in order. Um, the next exciting thing was on May the 9th, um, I actually received a vision and I believe it could have been my first vision. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. So I'm gonna share this screen with you, it's called the Stellarium. I am not a pro at this at all. I just kind of poke around on it, so bear with me. But um, I didn't know what the vision was, but what I want to show you is, um, if you are looking at the screen and not just listening, there's um, an asteroid called Beryl, B-E-R-Y-L. And Beryl is in scripture. I think there's actually eight different scriptures with this name in it. It was a stone in the, the priest breastplate of the 12 stones representing the 12 tri tribes. Um, it's in the book of Daniel 10, um, and that's the chapter where Daniel um, has this uh, prayer that he's praying. And there was a 21 day um, before the Lord came and spoke to him. Um, so right now we're in that 21 days um coming up to the ninth of Av, they actually do a a morning and some fasting for 21 days prior to the ninth of Av on the hebrew calendar so we are a week away from that um today so this is like the 14th day into that fast so what i saw in my vision was um let's see if i can well, it's over this um, arm, but if you can just see the screen, know that what I saw was a black dot, like what's shown here, and it had all these little white things around it. And I'm like, gosh, am I seeing a vision? What is that? And then all these little white things were kind of flickering in place, if you will. Um, they weren't like moving around or darting or anything. They were just kind of moving in place all around this just black dot like a super black dot and then i start seeing a cross come out from the black dot coming towards me and then it would turn to an x and then another one same thing a cross and then it would turn to an x and that happened three or four times and then it stopped so i didn't know what this was i didn't know i had a vision um it was actually on May the 9th, it was Mother's Day. I remember calling Kathy and talking to her about it and, you know, just really didn't understand it. Um, just prior to having that vision, I had learned about the ancient Hebrew letter number 22, Tav, being a cross in the ancient and then an X, like in the I don't know what they call it, Middle Ages or whatnot. So it's, it's different than the, the current one now. Um, but it originally started out as a cross and then an X. It was changed. So um, I didn't know that at, at, you know, at first. You know, I didn't put um, that together. And then Kathy and Dan were doing a teaching and it was on... Um, the mark but not mark of the beast it was like a mark where you're sealed and um she had up on the screen tom and this and i'm like oh my gosh tom is the cross and then i went up and got the paper and confirmed it and i'm like oh my gosh and there's the x and i'm like oh wow so i just figured like god was showing me you know that it was this ancient lettering and that's that's all i really knew and then it was on uh, May the 16th that I learned what the vision was because um, dear brother from Hourly Watch watches the sun, moon, and stars all the time. And he started showing and did a video about Beryl. And it was this black dot. He was showing it and it was in the middle of all these stars. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's my vision. That's what I saw. 
it was like, wow, it was, it was pretty incredible. So he started talking about how Beryl and the sun would be in alignment on 717. So um, I just thought that was pretty amazing. And then um, the next day on May 17, I'm doing errands and I see a 717 on a license plate. And now I'm seeing it quite often. But, um, and I had known about 717 from a couple years ago in Pearl Colary and some others were doing a lot of teachings on it. So it wasn't anything that was new to me. I, I understood it. Um, so I just want to show you what's going on here. Um, so I'm going to change the date. It's on, um, well, that was yesterday's date. Um, so there's 711. And, um, Pardon me, it's being kind of slow to respond. So there we go. It just kind of has to pause and catch up. But you see how the sun and um, barrel are conjoining here on 717. And it's like, see the at the right arm of this sign in Gemini, these are the twins in Gemini. And now we have Mercury, the messenger planet right here um, in the other twin. And so when you read um, Daniel chapter 10, and I apologize, I should have brought this up. So give me just one second. It's just a short scripture and I'll bring it up. Um, Cause I want to read this to you cause it's pretty, you know, impactful. Um, Daniel 10, six. I'm going to start at 10.5. He says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of your face. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes in lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words were like the voice of a multitude to see is like his body we are his body so um you know just believe barrel is representing his body and the sun like we become one with him and this is on 717 so it just seems pretty significant um that that's happening at that time frame um and then the other thing i recently learned uh, the Holy Spirit led me to, because um, I was trying to search out planets and understand their meanings because I'm not well versed in understanding all of those. But um, when I was doing so, I came across um, um, a constellation of stars called Messier 35. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. Where's that at? And it was in Gemini. So, um, Messier, so I thought, so I'm just going to bring that up, since you know Beryl is behind the sun, so um, in Stellarium, it's M35, so I can select this, and it's going to show you where it is. So this M35 is in the foot um, of the other twin, and it's a large open cluster of stars. And it consists of several hundred stars, which 120 are brighter than the magnitude 13. So apparently there's 120 bright stars within it that are, you know, signal. And then I went, I thought, huh, I want there's the A means. So I Hold looked on, at the Hold on, sister. Means. It, it cut off that the last thing that you said in the last sentence, and I'm not sure what you said. Did you say okay? Okay. Well, I um, was interested in what the word Mercier, Messier. It looks like Messier. I'm, I'm sure it's Messier. It's it's French, but <laughs> anyway, okay. It means harvest master, someone who keeps watch over the crops that are ready for harvest. So we, as the bride, you know, we Kathy's talked so much about this. When we go outside of time, we come back and we're helping reap the harvest for the Lord. And so I just thought that was an amazing um, thing that the Holy Spirit directed me to. I haven't heard anyone else ever talk about this. So 
that was pretty incredible. And it's amazing. So, and I, I actually can bring that dream up if you want me to. Did you want to bring up Jennifer's dream? Yeah, so um, this is a great time for Jennifer to share her dream that she just had last night. Um, and we're going to let her share that with you because it ties right into what we were shown here. And um, it's just amazing how God uses us on this team to to show us things that just fitly join together. It's, it's awesome. So it's amazing. go ahead and uh, share, Jennifer, um, your dream with them about this is literally today, guys. <laughs> Amazing. Jennifer, have, okay. you got, have you got it? Okay. I, I can get the drain real quick. Okay. In this drain, I was at a table having supper with four other people. The table I remember was set with a white tablecloth. At the head of the table was an elderly oriental man. I sat on the side of table with a man on my left side. Across from us on the, on the other side of the table were two women. And uh, I'd like to say that there were five of us and uh, five in the Greek Strong's Concordance means Abba Father. We had a certain amount of time to eat. We had prayer before eating, and then while we were eating, one of the women started singing us a, a new song about the harvesters. How about that? Woohoo! <laughs> I was moved almost to tears. Go ahead. I was moved almost to tears. No. And I'll keep going. And she said, I was moved almost to tears and sang the harvesters. I sang the harvesters, but not the whole song, like the woman did. When she was finished singing, I said, That was beautiful. Then we were told, It is time to go. I raked some crumbs into my plate that had fallen on the table and took a quick sip of wine. The man beside me pulled my chair out for me and we had to be finished to go and I woke up praise the Lord so Allison do you want to say what we believe that some of the translate or the trans interpretation <laughs> of that or do you want me to go over it real quick or what, what, which way do you want to um, you, can, you can go ahead do I need to mute my mic so it doesn't bounce back um, it might help just if only if we're talking if we're talking, it kind of, it might cut off a little bit if you're not muted. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so uh, this one, what we had kind of got on this is that the five people, like Jennifer said, that means um, Abba Father, and then she had taken a sip of wine, and there was crumbs on the table, so we believe that meant communion. Um, obviously, I think we all know what the harvesters mean. <laughs> And uh, so, Jul uh, Julie, Jennifer, we have a lot of J's on our team. <laughs> Jennifer really believes this mean is is a, a really strong sign that we're here, just like everybody else is getting. Wait till you hear the messages we have today. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, and so, let's see, it was moved to tears. So she sang the harvesters. Um, table the table I'm just re, re going through it real quick at the head of the table is an elderly oriental man that one I'm not sure what that represents hmm elderly oriental man I sat on side on the side of the table with a man on my left side across from us on the other side of the table were two women we had certainly it could you know it could just mean it could be just re representing everybody you know like all nations or something you know what i'm saying but that's the the basic understanding basically in general the lord um jennifer believes the lord is showing her that this is a yet another confirmation today 7 11 how about that and by the way we're doing this video on 7 11 7 17 7 11 you know there's a lot of numbers that are um repeating here guys 
But, um, so that's what we really think this is. It was really cool. We thought that was so exciting that she had that dream today. So we just wanted to share that with you. And then I'll bring it back to Allison, and she can tell you what she thinks. Go ahead, sister. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I say something oh, hold, that I didn't. Hold on one second, uh, I, Jeannie. Yeah, hold on one second, Allison. Jeannie, what did you need? I wanted to say I see the old Oriental man as wisdom, which oh. is the Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! <laughs> Praise that's God. There you go. Because that's what I was going to say too. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. See how the Lord works, you guys? That's why you got to have fellowship, guys. This is exactly why. Amen. The Holy Spirit works through the body. Okay, take it back, Allison. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I had thought of this, but I hadn't mentioned it to anybody yet. Um, look at where this Harvest um, group is, this Mercier 35. It's in the foot, and it reminds me of, in your feet, we're shod with the preparation of the gospel. Yes! So we're going full, you know, yeah. it's in the foot, like we are going to be. That's <laughs> so awesome, there's sister. just like, you know, it's not up in the chest, it's not anywhere else, it's, it's at the foot, like getting ready to go. So I thought that was pretty cool, too. Um connection to where it actually is within within them okay so that was pretty cool and then as far as jim and i i want to play this brief little um video from dr barry ah who puts a lot of fun things together um you may have seen some of his videos before but he talks about some constellations right here so i just wanted to play this because um, give credit where credit is due. I love the way he explained this. So I'm going to hit play here now. Let me go ahead and pop my screen open a little bigger. Uh, where'd my play button go? Hold on. Sorry. Uh, 15th day of the third month. That was right. Oh, goodness sakes. It's... Today, I'm going to show you the oh, five Sorry. It's okay. It's just ads, place. you know. Happens to me all the time. Right. Noah saw the tops of the mountains. This is the first day of the fourth month. It's two weeks away from that particular story. But in the sun, moon, and stars, the sun is right in between the strong man, Orion. Remember Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The strong man, he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like the strong man coming out to gather his breath. Okay? So the heavens declare the strong man coming out. Shaman, who gathers his Shava oat offering of the two lambs and the good goat. We have the great Reem, Chorus, who is trusted to bring the wheat back into the barn. And then we have Gemini, which is Jesus as royalty and Jesus as a servant, but also represents the immortal one, given his immortality to the mortal one that is appointed to God. And then we have a straight shot to God, to the throne. The heavens declare the glory of God. So, we have 315. Okay. So that's what I wanted to share with you there is about his Gemini description. I just loved it. I was looking for something at an understanding with, you know, these things that I've been shown. And so I just wanted to share that with you. Now that video was obviously prior to um, the end of June when he had a timeline, a watch date set for around uh, June 25th, 26th, that time frame. So he's sharing from his perspective of what he believes on the uh, Hebrew calendar. You know, it it was um, back at that time, 3.15. So don't get confused by March 15th. That's not what it was, okay? So um, just wanted to share that with you. I thought that was pretty cool. Hey, can I do a quick note? 
uh, about yeah. Jennifer's dream. I didn't even see this till just now, but Linda in chat also said wisdom. So that's a three full chord, three confirmations for that. So that oh, that's old man. awesome. Yep, definitely wisdom. Yeah. And I thought he could be a leader of the group as well. Very, very much so. Absolutely. Yeah, she said he was older, so. Yep. Very yeah. cool. Thought that was awesome. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. So um, I've kind of shown you um, the things about Beryl here and the Mercier. The other thing I wanted to show you is um, this picture. I did this a while back, and I noticed that, well, even the harvest stars would be in alignment now. Um, Mercury, the sun, we know Beryl is behind the sun. Venus and Mars are in Leo. And then, you know, got a straight shot down here to Virgo where the moon is. And on 717, the moon is at 50%. Um, okay, so on 716, it's up in, in the womb part, if you will. On 717, the moon is birthed out. And we can't see it on the screen, but then on 718, the, the 9th of August, it's in Libra, the scales, judgment. So I just kind of wanted to give you that visual picture. That's amazing. Um, and share that with you. Okay. Amazing. So um, I just think it's awesome. That was one of the, the main things that... Um, God has shown me in these last few months and he just kind of keeps building on it. Um, another thought that I had was I had a series of numbers um, of 5, 12, 14, and 9. And I always thought when I got them that, you know, it was back before, you know, mid-May. It was probably that I got those numbers, I think, in April. Um, so I kind of thought, you know, it was May 12th, 14th. I knew that that was the time frame of, you know, that um, Israel's, you know, 70th year ending, um, that kind of thing. But I, I didn't know about the nine. I was adding nine days. I, you know, just different things with nine. I thought, well, nine means um, divine completion. Maybe that's what it was. And so um, about a month ago, I had the thought, well, if the, the 5, 12, 14 was the prophetic understanding of Israel and that time frame ending, and, you know, it's a prophetic uh, thing in scripture, then the nine just seems to me like it would also be prophetic of what's going to happen to Israel as well. So I just, you know, it wouldn't surprise me that it's connected to the ninth of Bob, that number nine that was at the end. Because I'm like, it just seemed like it was out of sequence, but it's it's really not when you look at it prophetically, time-wise. So I thought I would mention that. Okay. Um, some other things. Um, where the vision was. Okay. So we had a lot of high watch times, you know, April, May, June. Um, one of the high. Uh, watch days was at the end of May when we had blood moon on the 29th. Um, so on May 26th, I heard from the Holy Spirit three days. And I had received a confirmation in the evening. I was working on a project uh, in my workshop. I like to do some woodworking, uh, make things for my kids, things like that. Um, and I just, the Holy Spirit was like, you need to come sit with me. I need to show you some things. You know, don't start the next project. You know, I was cleaning up the one I just finished. Don't start the next one. Just come sit with me. I need to show you something. And I felt like it had to have do something with the three days because I'm like, three days from what? You know, to what? You know. So, um, you know, obviously I was just thinking, you know, May 26th to May 29th. We were looking at that as a high watch day. You know, that would have been resurrection day on the calendar for second Passover, things like that. So um, someone in our chat that the team, um, we chat back and forth via this little chat message system. And they had posted a video in there from um, uh, God's Healer 7. 
and for some reason I just knew that I was supposed to start there. I don't know how it just came to mind, like, go start there, seek me and open that up. As soon as I opened up my cabinet and I brought that video up, up in the corner where it kind of tells you, I think it's the next video in queue, it said three days. So it was my confirmation that I really did hear three days. And, um, you know, I keep praying like, Lord, what's this three days? So um, I just wanted to share that because of some other time frames coming up um, during this, um, you know, 7, 16, 17, 18 time frame, okay? Um, okay, so um, let's see here. The next thing I think I'm gonna jump ahead and share is um, Juanita um, that we know, um, Kathy, um, do you want, is she, she's, she's a our follower. spiritual, she's our spiritual daughter and okay. she's, she's still, you know, she, she took a break from the team for a while. She just had a baby in December and it was, you know, she took a, she took a break for a while and, um, she, but she keeps in contact with us all the time and she's always telling us things she's getting from the Lord and everything. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, this kind of is going to lead back to the menorah. I was on a walk one day and, um, I was just thinking about, you know, the dream that I had had about the menorah. And I was thinking on like how there's so many different representations of, of the arms and the menorah. Um, you know, they're, you know, each represent a thousand years. Jesus came on the 4,000th year, the fourth candle. The, you know, four means door, he's the door. Um, you know, so you have the 7,000 years there. You have the seven feasts. Um, there's all these connections with the menorah. And I just kind of had this thought, like, I wonder if each arm could represent, you know, 40 days, you know, because there's a lot of 40 days in scripture everywhere. And a lot of 120 days in scripture everywhere. Like I already shared with you, you know, there's 120 stars, bright stars, and then there's the 35. So I had this um, thought about that. And, you know, I'm like, you know, it's just a thought on my walk. I'm like, oh, that'd be interesting kind of thing. And then, um, I think it was probably the same day or the next day after, like it was really fast that um, Kathy posted um, a message from Juanita and what she has been giving from the Lord, what she was um, shown was August 24th, end of season. And I thought, wow, that's pretty amazing, you know, message. And I thought, huh, I wonder what 120 days um prior to that is and it's april 26. so april 26 27th um that was also a high watch day um for like passover on you know enoch there's so many different calendars guys and you know someone thinks their calendar's right but what i've seen and been charting it's like things are falling on all of them like the Lord maybe is interconnecting them. I, I don't know, but it's, it's pretty amazing. So, um, 4, 26, 27, that would have been Passover, um, like first Passover, okay, on the Enoch calendar. And then obviously the, you know, 29th would have been Resurrection Day. So, um, 120 days prior, it's 4, 26. So I think, you know, that was quite interesting. Um, when I when I got that, so um, with that, um, what ties into that that I heard from um, uh, the Sword of God channel is, and with the interest of time, um, okay. So here's the screen. I'm just going to explain this instead of playing it because I think it might take a little bit too much time. But what he's explaining is Jupiter and um, Mercury are in Capricorn on um, uh, 4-13, April 13th. 
So there's a scripture in Luke 22 that talks about follow the man with the pitcher of water. So this is what that's coming from. So Mercury passes through Aquarius and Jupiter's following it. So it gets in the midst, I believe, of the belly of Aquarius, the man with the pitcher of water, at the uh, end of April. That uh 4 26 time frame okay what's interesting is it stays in the belly of aquarius until april or april august 25th the day after juanita was told end of season so i thought that was a pretty cool connection um to all of that just something you know to um keep mindful of as we continue to be watchmen um, so I just wanted to share that with you, um, that it doesn't move outside Aquarius until that time ends and she was given end of season. So another very interesting, um, uh, something to take note of, okay? Okay, so, um, okay, moving, let's see. We have um, different signs um, that have been given uh, let's see. Um, I'll leave this picture up because we'll get to this in just a second. But just to let you know, regarding breaking up the 120 days into 40 day increments, um, the first 40 days landed on um, June the 5th. And June the 5th was the start of the Six Day War back in 1967. So that's interesting day or the 80th day the 15th before these dates so another very interesting you know uh date for that to fall on is right before uh we're looking on uh, next weekend okay so that's pretty cool um I have, um, on June the 8th, that week on the creator's calendar, I'm just going to talk about different calendars. That week was second Passover on creator's calendar. And the number 159 was part of a, a math formula that I was given. And the 159th day was June the 8th. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and from that date to the 9th of Av uh, is 40 days. So there's another 40 day connection. Okay. So I just see things happening on all these different things, uh, time frame wise. Okay. June the 10th. This is when the eclipse was. And this is really exciting. There's been some different signs. Um, regarding uh, scripture and Luke, you know, it talks about no sign will be given, but the sign of Jonah, you know, so as he was to, um, I'm not doing it, you know, verbatim, but you get the gist, as he was assigned to Nineveh, so shall the uh, son of man be to this generation. So the eclipse was on the tent, and um, this man was swallowed by a well. His name is Michael. He was just in the mouth of the well. Um, and then he got spit out after 30 or 40 seconds is what I've heard. So this happened off of Cape Cod. And Cape Cod is where um, the Bayflower landed and that 400 years uh, prophecy in Genesis has passed. So that was at the end of last year, I think December. So um, just a lot of connections with where it happened, along with scripture. Um, and so that happened on the 11th. And so from when that happened to 9th of August, 37 days, and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then on the other side, uh, over, I believe this was in England, yeah, there was, you know, all in scripture, it says, as in the days of Noah for the end time. So there was this replica of the ark that they would not let 
go out into the waters because they weren't sure if it was seaworthy or not. It had been, you know, previously, but um, it was detained here. So, you know, that was just, that was pretty interesting. So I just wanted to um, share that with everybody. There was also another sign, a Jonah sign, when the tower collapsed um, in Florida um, as well. And there's a lot of connections there. You can go to Steve Fletcher's channel. Um, he's got some things on that. And if you do a search on YouTube, there's another man that's got a lot of interesting connections to that as well. But if I'm going from memory, but I believe the first person they pulled out alive, his name was Jonah. And the cranes that are working the debris and stuff have the name Alpha on them. Um, there's connections with the address and a lot of things there. So you can kind of do a search around on that. But just some noteworthy things connecting us again to this time frame that's coming up. These signs that were being shown. All right. So once um, our our watch day of the eclipse passed and we're like, okay, you know, I decided to um, uh, look at um, how many days it was to 717 because that was our next high watch time. So when it was 37 days and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Um, it was 37 days, but it was 888 hours. And oh my gosh, kids, there is so many connections. I knew 888 was, you know, the number for Jesus in Greek. The Greek letters uh, for Jesus' name total up to 888. So I went on um, and Googled, you know, 888 and, and that kind of thing. And then, you know, the 37 came up that's encoded in Genesis. I'm not sure if many of you know, but 37 and 73, they mirror each other and they're encoded in Genesis. Um, and so this screen I have up, you can do a search and just, I just typed in number 37 encoded in Genesis one. So there's YouTube videos about it. And look at this top one, the DNA of creation is tied to the number 37. How amazing is that? Um, so you can go through, there's just, it just, the list goes on and on and on about all of the connections and all of the prime numbers and things like that. So there's this 37 days um, from the eclipse to 717. And then I also counted backwards from Juanita's 824. And interesting enough, hers went to 719. So we have a 717, a 719 with the 718 sandwiched in between. And I thought, that's quite interesting. So we have this three days. So I'm like, okay, Lord, is this where that three days you, you told me is coming into play? Um, I don't know, but I'm just sharing with you what I've heard and, and just take everything to the Lord in prayer, okay? So um, just, just some amazing things like that. Um, Okay, so also on June the 10th, um, I had a dream about being pregnant. And I remember I was quite pregnant and I'd kind of put my hand down under my belly and I, I was out somewhere and I don't know who I was with. I can't remember where I was or anything like that. But the main thing was I said, I have to go. I can feel the heartbeat. So that was the, you know, the main thing about that part. And then... Um, um, something happened in between that and me getting home. Someone said, oh, you can go get some food at this place. And there was a big wall and I couldn't get, you know, to the food over the wall. I went through the doors. Um, I'm not sure quite what the Lord's showing me there, but the main part was when I got back home, my husband wasn't home yet. It was like my in-laws were there to watch our little boy who would have been three. And um, and I didn't have any babies after him. So, you know, this is just, I think, the Holy Spirit showing me something with the numbers again. Because he I, it would have been 24 years ago. He's 27 right now. So it would have been 24 years ago 
and 24 years, 24 times 37 is 888. It was like God was showing me these numbers again and that I was pregnant. I was ready to give birth. I could feel the heartbeat, which I thought that was strange. So um, I'm like, you can't really feel a heartbeat, but that's what I said. So, um, so the heartbeat of God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. And then um, on that same day, our sister Jen again, um, we kind of, we kind of have a lot of connections when we dream and have revelations. Yes, so you and it's, Jennifer, it's, man. It's pretty I'm fun. You. It's awesome. Um, yeah, so she had woke up that morning. I, I don't remember um, if it was a dream or she just woke up. But she had the song in her mind, My Eyes Have Seen the Coming of the Glory of the Lord. And so what was fun was when I was doing a 717 search on YouTube, as I scrolled down a ways, there was a church that has a hymn number. The hymn number is 717 for that song. So <laughs> just fun things like that we like to share with you guys. Okay. Um, so that was another interesting little tidbit there for um, June the 10th. Okay, let's see here. Um, we've talked about um, the 37 days, the 888. Okay, so regarding the 37 days and 888, I mentioned Pearl Caleri on YouTube. She has amazing videos on 717 that she's done from like two years ago coming forward. And her most recent one, I think Kathy's going to talk about that she just did today. Oh, yeah. Um, but I <laughs> yeah oh yeah uh, but the one prior to that she goes into again the number 37 and the 888 number for jesus so she has the video on that as well so check that out um it's amazing we kind of um emailed back and forth a little bit i was sharing some numbers with her that i had gotten and stuff so just confirmation it was pretty pretty awesome um Another thing from, I believe it was May 29th, was in my numbers previously from a couple months ago, um, I had seen seven sevens two days in a row. Like, uh, I never look at my odometer on my car. I couldn't tell you the mileage at all. I just never look at it. I look at the gas gauge and that's about it. <laughs> so. One day I happened to look down and then there was five sevens and I had to stop and take a picture of it. And then later on, I saw like two more sevens together and I'm like, oh, there's seven sevens. And then the same thing odometer wise, but I saw seven sevens again the next day. Like I think there was four together and then three together. Um, so I had these seven sevens. So I thought, oh, well, seven times seven is 49. Um, so with that, it's 49 days from uh, the blood moon. You know, blood moon, that's a big warning thing, right? Um, to 717 again. So I just thought I would share that. It's an interesting connection. Hey, Allison, that, I, think we got uh, about, I think we got about five minutes, just so you know. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I know. We went fast. Well, let's <laughs> see what the uh, most important stuff is left on our list here. Um, okay. Nice, Google. Talk about seven, seven. Okay, so I noticed on the clock for um, July, uh, I see the 16th and the 17th a lot together. So um, I just wanted to share that with you, that the time of the half moon, the moon on the 17th is Israel time 711. Okay, 0711 was the time so eastern time would be 11 minutes after midnight so it would be on 717 but for central time it's 11 11 mountain standard time 10 11 pacific standard time 9 11. so um i just thought that was interesting because i see 16 and 17 together all the time just like this slide here um he talks about um seven one people talking about 717 but let me just scroll forward to get to, is it going to work for me? No. Anyway, he shows a slide on his video that um, 
back when the temples were destroyed on the Torah calendar, it shows July 16th and 17th on both days, July 16th and 17th. And I, I see them together all the time. So again, he talks about Beryl uh, as well. So check out Hourly Watch's channel. He gives a lot of great Sun, Moon, and Stars updates. Um, he doesn't understand first fruits, I don't think. So, you know, just have some understanding in that way, what you know. Um, but we can all have puzzle pieces, okay? Let's see. Um, but this has been so exciting. I just thank you guys so much for um, everything. Um, your patience getting this uh, ready. Um, there's one, uh, I just want to see if I can bring this one slide up. See if I can find an image. Not the main, but I think it's this one. Okay, I wanted to show you this image real quick. So there was um, this ceremony they did uh, the day before Biden was inaugurated. They were commemorating, you know, 400 years Mayflower Compact, you know, the 400 lights, 400 bell toes, 400,000 corona victims, and so forth. So in looking at this, you can see who they worship down here in the middle. I'm sure you all understand about that. Um, so what I see is we have two people and two people. I see 22, 23 all together all the time, okay? 22 is the number for light, all right? So I see a 22 here, a two and a two. I um, This is the way I look at things, okay? So they're worshiping, you know, false god stuff. And they're making a mockery of our true, wonderful Lord and Savior, all right? Because the 22 is, is taught. And the numerical value for Tav is 400. So um, when you see pictures, you know, you just have to kind of look to the spirit and, and see like, what am I really seeing? You know, what's, what's the message? So they're just mocking our Lord with this whole setup right here. So I wanted to share that. And um, since I guess we're probably out of time, I'm sorry I didn't quite get through all the notes, but you have all of the main stuff. Yeah. I think you did um, good. So um, I hope that's all been a blessing to you as it has been us. And we love you guys. And I'll let Kathy close us out. It was awesome, sister. You did such a good job. Great Praise job, Allison. <laughs> So glory to just, God, hallelujah. Glory to God. We just wanted to show you guys the amazing anointing that God has on this team. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah. These girls, like, it's amazing to see what the Lord's doing with them. It, it's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, so there you go. We got more confirmations all over the place for the for the 9th of Av. Um, basically, this week, <laughs> this week, this coming weekend, um, there's a lot coming up here, guys. Um, Which one of them I'm going to talk about in a separate video here? Yeah, in a I'm going to do a different video in a minute. But we're going to end this for now. Um, anybody on live stream, hang on. Uh, we're going to start a new one, and I'm going to uh, talk about some messages and updates. Okay? So thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us. We love you. And as we always say, if we're still here, we will be back as the Lord leads. All right. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.